Welcome to the final lecture in this video series of a rhetorical history of presidential debates. Thanks for sticking around for the entire history. Remember, we started this way back in the 19th century. Now we're approaching the year 2000. 1996, 2000, the debates of 2004, the debates of 2008. Not much really to talk about there, so I thought I would use this last video to talk about why it is that the Commission on Presidential Debates is so dangerous and what maybe some alternatives to having the Commission on Presidential Debates would look like from someone who spent most of his life talking about debate. Well, I don't just talk about the debates, I also research them as well and, and teach about them. Which is a far cry from anyone who serves on the Commission on Presidential Debates today. The Commission has no experts in language, no experts in media, no experts in debate, no experts in argumentation, and no experts in oratory serve on the Commission. Who serves on the Commission of Presidential Debates? Ex-elected officials from both parties, ex-journalists, and uh, or retired journalists. Um, well, Charlie Gibson is on there. I guess he's a journalist, but hosting a morning talk show on a network is uh, barely journalism. And then inexplicably, the president of Notre Dame serves on the commission. I don't really know why that is. But suffice it to say that the commission uh, chooses their board members uh, from former politicians for the two parties and people who they think give them an image of being more publicly plugged in. Please understand that this is a direct line between the 1960 debates and today where you had the parties fighting with the networks to determine what these are going to look like so that both sides benefit. It's always for the benefit of the two sides, the two parties and journalism. And that's what this board reflects today when you go and look at the membership on the board. Now, the Commission on Presidential Debates, the founder is somebody who has a direct line back to our friend Adlai. Remember Adlai Stevenson and his dream of a national forum through technology on the issues facing the country? We're hell and gone from that vision. But it was someone who was working for him created the Pre Commission on Presidential Debates, Newton Minow. Newton Minow, pictured here in the 1960s as Kennedy's FCC director, is would have been famous anyway if he hadn't created the Commission on Presidential Debates because he's famous for giving a speech where he called television uh, had the danger of becoming a vast teenage wasteland, which was uh, commemorated by The Who and uh, made fun of by lots of uh, television producers. In uh, Gilligan's Island, the SS Minnow, the boat that sinks, is aptly named for their feelings about the FCC commissioner and his view of television as pretty much trash. Minow, to his credit, was not just a, a critic. He thought television could be much better used educationally, politically. He really did kind of believe in the same things that his ex-boss, Adelaide Stevenson, had gone to Congress to argue for. The transformation of FCC law. The transformation of federal law to permit political debates on TV. But we get the commission through kind of a weird sense of what Minow is about. Minow believes that the commission must serve the presidential candidates. If they don't buy in, we cannot have the debates and everyone loses. But how much is too much? If we just give them another place to kind of do their thing and do the party thing, the things the parties want, where is that element of the citizenry or the public coming in? Where's the element of this organization serving the public? Just getting the two candidates together to repeat what they say on the airwaves anyway, and in political or, or meet the press kind of talk shows anyway, just at the same time, doesn't really seem like a huge amount of value added, and certainly it is not what counts as a debate. Minow always defends the commission by saying, well, it's either this or nothing. But I think that this all or nothing fallacy is a foolish way to talk about the debates in the modern era. We now have podcasting, a place where people get most of their news. We have YouTube, a place where people get lots of educational content and instruction. To continue to keep the debates on TV and say that, well, the parties won't participate on TV is to miss the enormous, enormous advantage and enormous power the commission could have now to diversify and expand theoretically justified, legitimate debates on all these other media formats that they don't even touch. They're obsessed with televised debates. In the debates between Mitt Romney and Barack Obama, those debates were aired on YouTube, which added the interesting element of the chat room. Since then, there have been YouTube debates where journalists like journalistic uh, companies like CNN and Primary Debates and uh, MSNBC and other um, networks will have YouTube questions played for the candidates as kind of a modified town hall, a virtual town hall of the air, hearkening back to NBC's 1930s uh, radio program, 
a real town hall of the air where you don't have to have Gallup select the people. You could literally just go and choose whatever questions off YouTube you want the candidates to answer. Unfortunately, yet again, there's the firewall. There's the gate where the documents are checked. The mass media is determining what questions get on the air and which ones don't. That's still, it's always going to be a challenge if you allow them to host the debates. But what about the commission turning it over to YouTube or turning it over to Discord or some other format to see what kind of debate they would host? I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Let's talk about a couple of controversies that happened uh, during the recent debate time. The biggest one is the financial crash of 2008. John McCain announced that he was not going to participate in the first debate of the 2008 election because he had to go to Washington to negotiate the buyout bill, something that President Bush had been uh, pushing on the Congress. He said that the financial exigency required his attention in Washington and the debate could wait. Barack Obama said one of the tests of a president is to multitask and you should be able to negotiate bills and, and do your job as a senator in Washington and participate in a debate for the value of the American people. People wondered if the debate would go forward. The commission announced it would. And uh, miraculously, John McCain appeared and did the debate. Uh, but this offered an interesting time for the commission to come forward. And experts did weigh in on whether or not the commission was doing the right thing. The Commission on Presidential Debates, it's a nonpartisan panel, says that it is moving forward with the plan to have this debate. And it added that it believes the public will be well served by having all debates go forward on schedule. Do you agree with that? Are we better served as American people as voters by this presidential debate going on? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a rare thing that Americans get to see this because normally the Commission for Presidential Debates holds its cards pretty close to its chest. It usually works with the campaigns very tightly and they negotiate the way the debate should go together. Uh, what we're seeing is a debate about the debates, which is a rare thing to see uh, anytime there's a presidential debate going on. Wow, that guy is really smart. Good looking, too. Anyway, there haven't really been that many crises since then. They've really got the, the format on lock. But even to his credit, I disagree with Newton Minow about so much. I don't think the all or nothing argument has any water at all. I think if you had the debates, even a surrogate debate, Shades of Calhoun and Lincoln in 1844, uh, would be preferable, and I think there's an appetite for that because you had a surrogate debate on CNN a few years ago between Bernie Sanders and Ted Cruz, and that debate, a lot of people watched that on CNN, and that wasn't for an election. That's a lot more in line with what Governor Stevenson wanted these to be. Minow says he would like to have the commission do a monthly debate on American issues, which would be great, but this never happens. Minow also critiques his own format and says the presidential debate format is not what a president does. Well, then why do it? Why not change it? You have all the power. You have all the credibility. Mr. Minow refuses to change the format. He refuses to try to influence the commission to do anything different because he's scared that one of the major candidates from a party wouldn't show up. I bet someone else would. I bet you could invite someone to stand in for that candidate and speak to the party platform. Somebody would do it. And the commission just needs to be brave and push on this model to have something different. What does Mr. Minow want in terms of a presidential debate? Well, one of his ideas that I think is pretty good is what he calls a brain trust debate. That is, the candidates ask the questions, in lieu of the journalists, to a panel of experts on whatever issue that debate's covering for that time, be it foreign policy, the economy, education, domestic issues, whatever it is, the candidates question for a period of time, four or five experts on the stage who will discuss it and offer their point of view and maybe disagree with each other. After that, each candidate should make a short speech saying how they have come to the decision about where they stand based on what the experts said tonight. I think that would do a much, much, much better job of giving us information about how the candidates reason and who we should support because we think their reasoning is good, how they look at evidence, and how they reason. Two things that debate legitimately provides when it's done in a correct theoretical way, that is, one topic, two sides, turn-taking and questioning, where you can see how someone has to, in the moment, defend how they got to a conclusion. That reveals a lot, not about who's right, but about who you agree with, which is what debate is meant to do. It's not meant to create good decisions. It's not meant to find the truth. It's meant to reveal to us a reasoning process that we may or may not want to identify with. And that is the heart of politics in a democracy.
As a final thought here, as we close this lecture series down, I would applaud the Commission on Presidential Debates to dissolve itself or to experiment with formats that are more in line with academic debating. It's much, much, much more important to have a format where reason and identification are revealed to voters so they can really see if what they believe is what they feel and think. We get caught up in ideology in this country. We get caught up with taking sides and picking the team that we most agree with. It would be better if candidates had to say, the reason I feel like this is because of this and another person challenge on it. We've had this before. The Oregon debates, Dewey and Stassen. Let's go back to that. That's the model I would like to see happen. Four debates, four topics, back and forth like that. No journalistic questions. That's what I would challenge the Commission on Presidential Debates to do. It would be a much better format than what we have now. And I think it's something that even Newton Minow would approve of. The presidential debates are going to be with us in this format unless somebody can take the power away from the Commission on Presidential Debates. Nobody will. The two parties have a chokehold on them. They're never going to release that. They have a forum that looks legitimate and neutral where they can do whatever they want to create the viral clips they want to spin their candidate the way they want. This is why presidential debates are so notoriously hard to decide or to figure out who won. There's no rule book by design. There's the memorandum of understanding between the two parties of what camera shots will be used, who will ask the questions, how many questions there will be, and how long of a speech people can give, two or one minute. The reason that it's two minutes include more information or more topics is because they're scared of their candidate making a gaffe, making a mistake. The longer you speak, the longer chance you have to mess up. The Commission on Presidential Debates supports a that that is scared of winning. They're scared of calling someone a winner. And for that reason, all of us lose.